Welcome to the Lifeline Health Lecture. In this session, I will be speaking about magnesium. Magnesium is probably the most important mineral that we have in our body. Usually, people are very concerned about calcium. And the most supplements and minerals that we take is usually calcium. Sometimes doctors recommend iron. But I believe that magnesium is the most important mineral that we have in our body. Let me give you an example. The magnesium in our body is just like the school teacher in the classroom. If the school teacher is missing, even if all the rest of the students are there, we won't have a lecture. But if the teacher is there and one or two or three of the students are missing, well, it's not a complete class, but we will have a lecture. Things will be functioning. And the same thing is true with magnesium. We need magnesium and it is very important. It's the most important mineral in our body and very few people also understand this. So uh, let's have a look at the magnesium. And magnesium is very important for as a health medicine, as a health, uh, sorry, as a heart medicine. It's important for heart health, but it's important for many other uh, things in our body too. The biggest amount of magnesium in our body is in our bones. And so it's not very easy for a physician or for a lab to test whether we have magnesium deficiencies or not. It's not all that easy. So magnesium deficiency appears to have caused 8 million sudden coronary deaths in America during the period of 1940 to 1994. This is by Paul Mason. That's a lot of people that probably died because of the lack of magnesium. There is a power and a force in magnesium that cannot be equaled anywhere else in the world of medicine. There is no substitute for magnesium in human physiology. Nothing comes even close to it in terms of its effect on overall cell physiology. Without sufficient magnesium, the body accumulates toxins and acid, residue, acid residues, degenerates rapidly and ages prematurely. So you can see there is a lot of power to magnesium. And we need to make sure that we have enough magnesium in our body. Magnesium is the mineral of rejuvenation and prevents the calcification of our organs and tissues. That is characteristic of old age, related degeneration of old age, related degeneration of our body. So if we have too little magnesium in our body, we will age much faster. And who would want to go through that kind of a process? Well, we all want to delay aging. And it goes against all gale winds of medicine, of medical science, to ignore magnesium chloride used transdermally and orally in the treatment of any chronic or acute disorder, especially cancer. I always use uh, or recommend magnesium for people that suffer from cancer. It's very important because it rejuvenates the cells, it will clean them out, and it does a lot of benefit. Now, the important thing with magnesium is that we use magnesium chloride because that's the only form of magnesium that our body can use. There, is a lot, there are a lot of other 
uh, magnesium combinations that are sold out there like magnesium sulfite and, and all kinds of other uh, uh, things. Now, if you take magnesium in another form that is not magnesium chloride, then you may be able to use it, but the body first has to restructure it and turn it into magnesium chloride. And especially for elderly people, uh, for mature people that want to use it for better heart health or uh, for rejuvenating and all these things, uh, elder people that are a little bit older, let's say 50 and above, usually have some problems turning magnesium sulfide into magnesium chloride because they are deficient in chloride. Because we use a lot of chloride in our di daily digestion. We produce like uh, up to four and five gallons of gastric juices made up from uh, hydrochloric acid. So we are using up a lot of chloride. And people above 50, they usually have uh, deficiencies and it's not easy for them to turn the magnesium into chloride. So why not take it in chloride form uh, from, uh, from the beginning? According to Dr. Russell Blaylock, low magnesium is associated with dramatic increase in free radical generation as well as glutathione depletion. And this is vital since glutathione is one of the few antioxidant molecules known to neutralize mercury. Glutathione, glutathione requires magnesium for its synthesis. So we need the magnesium in order to produce glutathione. And this uh, glutathione is uh, a, a one of the most important uh, antioxidants that we have in our body. And it can even help to reduce or neutralize mer mercury. Now, mercury is a very serious problem, especially for people that have been eating a lot of meat because there is a lot of mercury in the oceans and all, uh, sorry, that, not that have been eating meat, that have been eating fish because mercury is in the oceans. You know, we use, in, only in this country, we use about 400 tons of mercury every year to treat the seeds that we put in the ground so that they won't rot. And so 400 tons we use only in this country each year. Now with 600 tons of mercury, you would be able to kill the entire population of this world. Now imagine if only the United States used 400 tons, how many tons are we using altogether worldwide? I don't have no idea right now, but it must be a huge amount. You can uh, kill the whole uh, uh, world population with that many times. And so it will end up little by little in the oceans, and that's why it has ended up. So the oceans contain a very high amount of mercury. In fact, in the city of New York, years ago, they published on their, on their health uh, uh, website, they published that uh, people shouldn't eat any fish or very, uh, very seldom because it increases the mercury level in your body. So glutathione is important to neutralize mercury and we need magnesium to do that. Now, several studies have shown on an increased cancer rate in regions with low magnesium levels in soil and drinking water. And the same, uh, and the same is true for selenium. In Egypt, the cancer rate was only about 10% of that in Europe and America. In the rural Fala, it was practically non-existent. The main difference was an extremely high magnesium intake of 2.5 to 3 grams in these cancer-free populations, 10 times more than in most Western countries. So in these areas, people, by eating the food from these uh, 
uh, rural areas there, they contain a lot of magnesium, and so the people get about between two and a half and three gram of magnesium per day. Now that's a huge amount of magnesium. And in this population, cancer is unknown. And you know, magnesium is an extremely alkaline mineral. It will really alkalize you. And if you get two and a half to three grams of magnesium a day, you better bet that you will be very alkaline. And in an alkaline body, cancer is not possible. So magnesium deficiency poses a direct threat to the health of our cells. Without sufficient amounts of these precious mineral, our cells calcify and rot, becoming breeding grounds for yeast and fungi invaders, all too happy to strangle our life force and kill us. Magnesium deficiency is carcinogenic and in case of solid tumors or high levels of supplemented magnesium, magnesium inhibit carcinogenesis. So if we have tumors or cancers or whatever, if we um, get high levels of magnesium, it will uh, decrease the carcinogenesis of our, uh, of our tumors. They will usually... Uh, go back, and uh, we will usually recuperate from these tumors. If one is interested in heart health, one has no choice but be interested in magnesium. Almost all adults are concerned about the condition of their heart and cardiovascular system. Some live in constant fear, wondering whether any ache cramp or pain in their upper body is a sign of a heart attack. The fact is heart attacks kill by the millions every year. Magnesium chloride can single-handedly change the landscape of cardiology. This is very interesting. What do most people take? They take aspirin. We just saw that in another lecture on, uh, on health where I uh, told you that there are about, what, 20,000 20, tons of uh, aspirin are taken every year in this country. And that's to avoid heart diseases. Now, why don't we use magnesium? Magnesium doesn't have any side effects. Yes, well, it may have a side effect because it will make you very alkaline. And that's exactly what we need in this acidic world. So it is a fantastic mineral that we really should be using if we can. It is established that clinically significant changes in a number of electrolytes occur in patients which co with congestive heart failure. Magnesium ions are an essential requirement for many enzyme systems, and clearly magnesium deficiency is a major risk factor for survival of congestive heart failure patients. So let's go the safe road. Let's use some magnesium. It's the most important mineral in our body. It's like the teacher, like the school teacher in the classroom. Magnesium is also required for muscle relaxation. Lower magnesium levels can result in symptoms ranging from tachycardia and fibrillation to constriction of the artery, angina, and instant death. Due to lack of magnesium, the heart muscle, muscle can develop a spasm or cramp and stops beating. Most people, including doctors, don't know it, but without sufficient magnesium, we will die. It is more than helpful to understand that our lifespan will be reduced if we run too low without sufficient magnesium in our cells. 
Yet, when someone dies of a heart attack, people never say he died from magnesium deficiency. No, we say he died of a heart attack. What's the cause? We don't know. That's the answer we get from the physician. I don't know. Magnesium, which is without doubt the most powerful, safe, nutritional drug on earth, is not considered a drug at all when taken orally or when used topically as a bath oil or salt. Doctors who know something about magnesium, and very few do, know that it is routinely used in emergency rooms to save lives in cases of cardiac arrest as well as for stroke victims. So, you know, I always wonder, why is it that all these things are known, but they are never practiced? If doctors use in the emergency room magnesium because they know that that's what will help you, why don't they tell you beforehand? Why don't they say, well, listen, take a little bit of magnesium every day and you can avoid your heart attack or your stroke or whatever. Obviously, no doctor's office or family medicine cabinet should be without magnesium. Magnesium chloride solutions gained from seawater offer a medic medical miracle to humanity, the one that many have sought but have not found. Nothing short of a miracle is to be expected in terms of general health status if cellular levels of magnesium are increased during illness. Let's use the magnesium. If we have enough magnesium, for example, then we will never get polio. If you have a flu and you take um, certain amounts of magnesium in intervals of, let's say, an hour or so, or maybe an hour and a half, you take certain amounts of magnesium, you can control the flu. It's a fantastic uh, home remedy, and it's not a medication. It takes about three to four months to drive up cellular magnesium levels to where they should be when treated intensely, transdermally and orally. But within days, patients will commonly experience its life-saving medical healing effects. So if you want to bring your magnesium levels to an optimum in your cells, then you need to take magnesium for about, um, I would say, about four to six months. And in this time, I personally uh, recommend that... Um, we should take about one gram of magnesium a day. And uh, what you can do is uh, we get from a lab uh, magnesium chloride, which is pharmaceutical grade, so it's so pure that you could even inject it if you had the right solution. You could, could even use it uh, um, intravenous. But um, you can take it orally. Magnesium chloride is very readily absorbed by our body and uh, all you got to do is mix it with water and you can drink it and uh, you should get about one gram of magnesium a day and why I say that is because in Egypt as we saw before the people in the populations where they never have cancer they get between 2.5 and 3 grams of magnesium a day. And I have experienced it myself with uh, one gram of magnesium a day. So after about four, five, six months, you get to a level where you then can reduce it and to a smaller quantity if you want to use it as a maintenance. Because really most of our foods nowadays are quite de depleted in magnesium. When the farmer replaces the nutrients that have been leached out by his crops from the ground, he usually replaces three, which is nitrogen, then phosphor, and then potassium. But if there is a fourth number on that 
uh, fertilizer, that is usually magnesium. So the first one is magnesium, but not very often it is used because it is kind of expensive and uh, the plants can do uh, uh, pretty well without it, except if the def deficiency gets too bad. So uh, usually we don't get really enough magnesium. Magnesium chloride, when applied directly to the skin, is transdermally absorbed and has an almost immediate effect on chronic and acute pain. So you can use it as a home remedy. If you got some arthritis there, apply some magnesium solution onto it. Now, I was talking before about magnesium uh, made from seawater. That is a very wonderful formulation. The only problem I have with the magnesium that's usually sold here, sold here in the country is that the concentration is so low that you have to, to, to drink in or use in two days the amount that they recommend for a whole month. Magnesium is expensive, and so they try to dilute it to a very low level where it is not very uh, efficient because it doesn't give us enough magnesium to increase the levels in our, in our cells. But that magnesium is a very, very good formulation. So um, I would recommend that if you can use magnesium, use magnesium chloride. If you don't know where to get it, you may contact us. Uh, we may be able to supply you with it. And uh, especially if you are here in the country, in the United States of America, and uh, let us know. And I hope that by using this uh, very important mineral that your health will increase. Thank you.